to the extent that I'm aware, I can't go to the store and buy a Chinese EV. To what extent was this messaging versus effective policy? Right, Joe. I mean, I think, um, first of all, it's good to see you too. I, I think it is uh, fair to say that it's largely messaging at this point. That doesn't mean that there's not uh, a strategic goal in mind here with the Biden administration. But the reality is that very few Chinese EVs have been making it onto the U.S. market anyway, both because of pre-existing tariffs and because of the fact that, um, you know, very few Chinese EVs have been exported to date. Uh, they actually don't seem to have a ton of overcapacity when it comes to EVs. Well, the overcapacity issue and the idea that maybe this is, in fact, just trying to get ahead of China dumping a bunch of product onto the market was something that U.S. Trade Representative Catherine Tai spoke with Joe and I about earlier today on Bloomberg TV. China's export model specifically, this is what she told us. Concern that China is doubling down on its export-led model of growth to try to lead the Chinese economy out of its current downturn by manufacturing beyond the demand required in China and pumping goods out into the global market. But Anna, when we think about what some of these goods actually are, this is stuff that the U.S., especially if it's pursuing a, a green transition climate agenda, is going to need access to, including things like batteries and critical minerals that we are still reliant on China for. Is this at risk of backfiring? Kaylee, I, I think that it is at risk of backfiring because of the fact that, you know, while it is understandable that the Biden administration wants to continue to ensure that um, there is adequate diversification of U.S. supply chains, that there's not over-reliance on China. And while it's reasonable to look at what China's doing domestically um, to bolster its economy and its emphasis on these strategic industries, um, manufacturing more products and then selling them to um, foreign markets, the reality is that some of these things, like critical minerals, like lithium-ion batteries, are things that the United States doesn't remotely begin to produce for itself in particular, you know, in any particular significance, and that it can't really get away from sourcing from China in the near term. And in order to do that, it would have to bring online a lot of mining, a lot of processing, uh, both at home and with partners and allies, faster than it is currently set up to do. Hmm. You know, it's really something, uh, Anna, we talk about this in I've been hearing the name Donald Trump. I've invoked the name a couple of times as well, because we have to know that the Biden administration did not lower a single Trump era tariff and thus tacitly endorsed them. And as we try to find sunlight between these two administrations approaches, I talked about it with Gene Sperling earlier today, president's economic advisor, and asked him about the difference. He sees it quite differently, by the way. Here's what he said. There just couldn't be a, a, a greater difference. First of all, let's even just look at the results. Our trade, def our trade deficit with China is right now um, uh, the lowest it's been in a decade, lower than any of the four years under the previous administration. Anna Ashton, is that a fair comparison or not? I, I just think that it's it kind of dodges the question. You know, the reality is that uh, basically, all of the tariffs do remain in place. Do they remain in place for exactly the same reasons that the Trump administration put them in place? You know, the Trump administration's original goal was to balance the trade deficit. Um, the Biden administration hasn't spent a lot of time emphasizing that, despite that statement that you got today. Um, I think that the tariffs remain in place uh, pretty clearly because of the fact that they continue to encourage U.S. companies to figure out alternative sourcing, alternative supply chains to, you know, reduce their dependence on China, which is a long-term strategic goal of the United States, according to both parties at this point. Uh, but, you know, are, are tariffs enough? No. And the Biden administration is also different from the Trump administration in its use of export controls, um, which has been a major emphasis. Yeah, that's an excellent point, Anna. And as we consider China's likely response to this, if anything could be done in retaliation in terms of tariffs being put on U.S. exports, for example, I also wonder not just the ways in which China could retaliate, but ways in which China could actually get around a lot of this, like, say, send cars through Mexico. That's a really good point, Kaylee, uh, because we certainly 
have seen lots of signs that um, China is doing just that, whether it's, you know, driven by some central government um, authorization or not. Uh, the fact of the matter is that as some U.S. producers and U.S. affiliated producers have uh, sought to diversify away from China for manufacturing for the U.S. market, um, their Chinese suppliers who are manufacturing the things that they need have, in many cases, followed them to places like Vietnam and Mexico. So I do think that that's something that we might see. Pretty remarkable to see on the terminal today. As a matter of fact, BYD debuting its first truck in Mexico today. Anna, what do these new tariffs mean potentially for Elon Musk? Is he in trouble in China? I don't want to speculate about what exactly will happen to Elon Musk. You know, it's hard to say. He did seem to have a pretty positive visit to China recently. Um, but in terms of, you know, what what China could use to respond, we know that China likes to um, be reciprocal um, in response to these sorts of actions. And the tricky thing is that because there is a trade deficit and because um, mm -hmm. what we trade with each other isn't, isn't exactly the same, um, you know, it's not easy to point to exactly what China will do. You know, yes, they could impose tariffs on um, on U.S. goods entering the Chinese market, but what goods? You know, I think agricultural goods are always a big target because they make up um, the bulk of what is in demand in China from the U.S., um, but they have backfired in the past. So I think, you know, we also might see something like uh, ratcheting up of the existing um, export license restrictions on graphite, which is critical to lithium-ion batteries, uh, because of the fact that the export license restriction is there um, and hasn't necessarily impeded trade yet, but could easily be um, used as as a tool to squeeze the U.S.